Having conquered a layer of the abyss, the heroes finally return to Cauldron to find that much has changed in their absence. The Lord Mayor missing, many presume that he simply fled the, the city overnight, while others think something more sinister occurred. Whispers of corruption amongst the officials remaining uh, spreads throughout the town. And worse yet, the player's return is not as celebrated as they may have hoped. Today we are finally getting back into the Shackled City Adventure Path as we unlock the secrets of the Soul Pillars. Secrets of the Soul Pillars was the sixth magazine installment of the Shackled City Adventure Path, releasing all the way back in April of 2004, so almost 16 years ago. It's kind of crazy to think. Uh, this is an adventure for four to six players, and the character level is suspected to be around, or should be around, 12th level by the time that you start um, this adventure. Uh, the adventure begins with the player characters making their return to Cauldron to find that some things have gone sort of awry while they've been away. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Lord Mayor has gone missing. Many believe that he simply saw how bad things were kind of getting in town and fled in the middle of the night. Um, others don't necessarily believe that, but that's the predominant theory at this point in time. Uh, the Cathedral of Weijas also completed, recently completed, a series of renovations that have a massive spire on the top of the cathedral um, that actually blocks the morning sun from reaching the, uh, the shrine of Pelor uh, that is run by a lone cleric who believes and accuses the temple of doing this on purpose to undermine his faith, and, well, there's sort of some truth to that. Uh, the character's return to Cauldron doesn't go unnoticed, however, and as they're relaxing uh, one evening, basically at a time when they should be uh, relatively, I don't want to say completely defenseless, but would likely not have their, their gear necessarily with them, a group of assassins barges in on them and launches an attack. Uh, this, the, <clears throat> these assassins are, have magical spells cast on them to enhance their abilities, including a silence spell cast on a pebble that gets thrown near uh, any of the enemy spellcasters. The assassins that do cast spells actually have a metamagic wand, which allows them to cast spells even without using a verbal component. So these assassins are very well prepared and magically backed up in ways that the assassins themselves couldn't possibly do themselves. The next part of the adventure has the players investigating where these assassins came from. Uh, the assassins essentially will flee if, if possible and are very unlikely to give up information unless extreme methods are used. But there are other people that the characters can go to and this next section of the adventure sort of details that. Eventually, uh, the players do learn that the Cathedral of Weijas are the ones that hired the assassins in the first place. Uh, also, at one point throughout the adventure, um, maybe before as the characters are on their way to the cathedral during the middle of their investigations, or maybe even after the investigations but before they leave town for something else, um, there's a little interlude which I'm going to show here right now. Um, back in Zenith Trajectory, the characters went down into the Kuatoan uh, settlement of Baal Hamantigan, where they faced off with a black dragon. Uh, the black dragon was known as Drorlot, the, the dragon father. A black dragon that was sort of obsessed with creating half-dragon hybrids. And the depending on how the fight went, the dragon was either driven away from the region or flat out killed. Uh, so this interlude actually has a minotaur son, or um, scion, I guess, or, of Drorlot, track down, finally track down the, the player characters. And this encounter can take many different forms. It actually gives some different things you can use with it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be a combat situation. You can use it for role playing, you can use it for uh, several different things actually, which kind of makes it an interesting encounter. You can have uh, the Zarek door, which is the Minotaur here, maybe just be curious about, um, about their encounter with his father. 
Um, he could be, you know, sympathetic to them. He may just want to learn more about uh, the dragon himself and if it escaped, maybe where it went or if they have an idea of what direction it fled in. And if you decide that your characters need a little extra experience points, then you can have this just be a flat-out... Um, combat encounter, but it's nice that there's different layers to this that you can use depending on what you feel might be needed or lacking in this particular adventure. So it's a cool little interlude there. But again, eventually the characters do find that the Cathedral of Wejas is the one that hired the assassins. Uh, the characters make their way through the temple's defenses with the not-so-corrupt members of the church having actually been sent home, uh, even though there's not necessarily that many of them. Uh, the church was shut down um, so that there would be no followers stuff in there. But there are the corrupt priests as well as some of their bodyguards and heavies, and any of the assassins that survived would also be here as well. Uh, the characters do find that the, the current individual in charge uh, of cleric by the name of Ike Iverson is the one who actually handled the assassination and the high priestess of Weejas has actually been out of town for quite some time actually she was unavailable even back before the characters left for the demon scar before going through the abyss so she's been away for quite some time uh, in addition to dealing with Ike Iverson the characters also find a note discussing the something about the ruins of a location called Kiran Kirill and something about the pillars. In addition here, the player characters are finally able to get their hands on a completed, finished, and um, fully functional soul cage. The information that they can learn from that is somewhat limited right now. However, the ruins of Kiran Kirol seem to be somehow connected to this strange artifact that radiates like necrotic transmutation and other um, sort of foreboding auras. Uh, the ruins of Kiran Kirol is actually a spellweaver ruins that are similar to what we had with Fatrick's voice back in um, the the chapter where the characters went to the Demon Scar. Uh, the Spellweavers had this massive empire that was settled in the region, you know, millennia ago until some magical catastrophe uh, decimated their, their civilization and left many of their locations in complete and utter ruins. Uh, in the magazine, the ruins of Kiran Karol are actually located underneath Cauldron itself, inside of the, the mountain that is this uh, dormant volcano. Uh, the ruins of Kiran Karol are kind of an interesting situation where these this is the location where the Spellweavers decided to experiment with necromancy magic as well as cold magic. So there's sort of an ice theme throughout all of this. Um, they see these um, like cryopods basically that will have dead Spellweavers in it, but they may do like there's actually a, a chart for corpse behavior. So, for example, if they walk past, one of the corpse's mouth can open as if it's a powerful scream, but nothing comes out. Um, you could see one where the corpse is just real calmly running its fingers up and down uh, the, the glass coffin that they're inside of. It's kind of a creepy location, um, but again, very, again, ice-themed. So, they, for example, they fight an ice devil and uh, some other cold-based enemies. Eventually, the characters do find their way to the soul pillars themselves. The soul pillars are basically just made of necrotic flesh and trapped souls, with the purpose of them being that it's sort of meant to be like a repository of information. It's kind of the necro uh, necromantic and the, the necrotic flesh equivalent, I guess, of like a USB drive. I, I, I don't know, but it's basically the pillars are made to house the lore of the Spellweavers. Um, I guess regular books just aren't enough, so this is the solution that they came up with. Uh, the, the pillars themselves are not completely unguarded, however. Uh, the characters do come across the individual who wrote the note to Ike Iverson, uh, a spellcaster and a lore master by the name of Fetter Aberdeus, and the pillars themselves are also guarded by not only a bone naga, and you can see the image of the pillars here as well, but a 
Dracolich, a green Dracolich by the name of Vitrus Bale, which is the one that we see here on the encounter. However, once the characters finally clear everything out, they can access the soul pillars or they can send people to study the soul pillars and start to learn a little bit of information about what's potentially going on here. Uh, and that's essentially the adventure itself. So it's broken into uh, three major segments. You have the assassination attempt when the characters arrive back in town, as well as the investigation that surrounds that. Uh, you have the assault on the Temple of or the Cathedral of Ouijas, uh, which were the ones that hired the assassins in the first place, and then you have the exploration of the Spellweaver runes of Curon Curol. Um, the third part is actually technically not mandatory for the adventure's progression. Uh, it's actually sort of a, an optional thing that the characters may want to pursue, um, but they're not, it, they're not forced into it, and if they don't, you can simply move on to the next installment of the adventure path. Overall, uh, I, this was one of the adventures that, or this, the chapters, I guess, of the campaign that I enjoyed running the most. Um, the fight with the assassins was one of the toughest fights in the entire campaign, maybe up to, with the exception of like the final, final enemy, but it was something that it really, it caught the players off guard because again, the, it was timed at a point where the characters would not, maybe not have all of their equipment on them. They may be relaxing for an evening just down at a tavern, uh, getting some drinks. So it, it, it was just, they were just sort of caught off guard. Um, the magical spells used to enhance the assassins were also very um, well thought out. And the Silent Stone was something that, uh, again, got a lot of reaction because uh, the players just didn't like it. <laughs> they, did not, they did not like the fact that um, this encounter was so well prepared against them and that they, they struggled. I think a couple of the players, when I actually ran this, ended up being knocked unconscious. They ultimately ended up succeeding. I think only the uh, the half orc like the fighter leader was the one that managed to escape, and they encountered him again uh, in the uh, in the cathedral. Uh, the investigation part was also a lot of fun to run with the players going around and asking some of the NPCs that um, they've dealt with in the past. Uh, while he's not mentioned in the magazine, uh, my players ended up going to. Uh, the half-elf uh, individual who is currently overseeing the city in place of the Lord Mayor, um, but, uh, the half-elf by the name of Valanthro, who the, player, who the players in my campaign began to see as a trusted source of information, and we're going to see eventually why that may be a bad idea, uh, but he was the one that ultimately ended up directing them towards the cathedral, mainly because, um, well, again, I'll, I'll save that for uh, the next installment, and I'm not going to get into it too much uh, right now. Uh, but again, this adventure kind of starts to mark the beginning of the end game. Uh, the first several chapters up to and including this one uh, took place over a relatively lengthy period of time. You could almost say that about a year had could, could have passed from Life's Bazaar, which is the opening chapter, until now. Um, in fact, some time sort of needs to pass while the players are on the abyss. Uh, or away from Cauldron for some of the things to, that have occurred in their absence to really uh, be able to happen. So it's kind of the, the slower pace of the campaign is about to come to a, a very, very uh, eventful end as the next several chapters are going to take place over a very short period of time. Uh, but this was, again, a lot of fun for me to run. Uh, the characters capturing the soul cage gives them the first uh, inclination of the cage rights and what they're doing. Uh, the full extent of their plans and who they are haven't been revealed yet, but that's something that is going to be happening very, very soon as well. Uh, overall, the, the themes of the adventure I, I liked again with the, the, the characters coming back, the investigation, them getting their revenge on the people who sent the assassins on them, and the ruins of Curon Curol were just really interesting. Um, uh, I, undead and necromancy are things that I like to explore in dungeons or villains and stuff like that, and I think they did a really good job of it here as well. Uh, and just the creepiness of like the glass coffins and the spellweaver corpses twitching, and just the use of spellweavers in general. Um, even though they looked kind of goofy, 
especially in the earlier depictions of them, I always thought that they were a really cool enemy type or creature type, and I wanted to sort of see more of them. So learning a little bit more about their society or learning a little bit more about some of the extreme experiments they would go through was very interesting in my opinion. Uh, and again, it was just kind of neat to the idea of the soul pillars as this necrotic um, flesh pillar that's meant to hold all of their knowledge. I just think overall there was a lot of really cool stuff in here. And the encounter with um, the, the Minotaur Half Black Dragon was a nice callback to a previous chapter as well, which was just a nice way of connecting everything, because up until this point, really, a lot of the adventures had been relatively standalone. Uh, so this was the first, in my opinion, the first real major callback to a previous chapter as we set up for the end game. So it was kind of nice to see a little bit of that continuity uh, taking place. Anyway, uh, so those are my thoughts on the Secrets of the Soul Pillar. I think it was, a, like I said, for me this was one of the most fun adventures up until now, up until this point, uh, that I had run. Uh, my players ultimately enjoyed it, although they were very angry at the assassins, which honestly was kind of a nice feeling. Uh, to, to have actually, you know, had that challenging a fight for them. Uh, they enjoyed the investigation. Uh, they did go around to several uh, different people. They didn't just run straight to Valanthro, in my case. And they were, they were creeped out by the ruins of Kiran Kirol. Um, I, the only thing that memory kind of fails me on is the encounter with the half-black dragon Minotaur. Um, I feel like it probably ended up being a combat encounter. Um, but I honestly can't remember if, if, if it was combat or role-playing. I wish I could. I really wish I could. Uh, but I honestly can't remember how that went. But overall, um, it was a really enjoyable uh, adventure overall. Had some creepy themes. Um, had some consequences for the player's absence. And um, overall, it was just a really enjoyable uh, chapter to run. And the first part of what's going to be the end game where the players finally start to, to, to put the pieces of the puzzle together. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video on the Secrets of the Soul Pillar uh, because next time, uh, so next month, I'm going to be doing this as sort of a monthly installment. We are going to be taking a trip to uh, visit the Lords of Oblivion. Thank you guys very much for watching and if you've played through the Shackled City Adventure Path or if you had the magazines, uh, let me know what your experiences were with the Secrets of the Soul Pillars. Um, did you run it as part of the Shackled City Adventure itself or was it a just a standalone adventure that you decided to use because there were some cool ideas in it? So um, let me know what, you, what, what your experiences were uh, in the comments below. So thank you guys very much for your patience in getting this series uh, sort of back on its feet. Uh, it's something that I really enjoy doing and uh, I'm glad to be picking it back up. So once again, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to reading your comments and I'll see you next time. Take care.